¿Qué tal chicos y chicas? Les habla el Friku y en esta ocasión tenemos una invitada muy especial en el canal. La mismísima 2B, o más bien su actriz de voz, la talentosa Kira Buckland, estará presente con nosotros. Activen los subtítulos del video para entendernos, ya que desde acá solo estaremos hablando en inglés. Thanks Kira for joining us today and give us the chance for this interview. Thank you so much for having me. Um, could you present yourself to the audience, please? Yes, so I am a voice actress who has been working in this industry for about 10 years now, but before that mm. I've been doing a lot of other sort of things. I am most known for playing the English voice of 2B in Nier Automata. Yes. I've also worked on projects such as JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Demon oh. Slayer, um, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, Dead or Alive, Soul Calibur, Street Fighter, Tales of Zestiria, Danganronpa, and so on. So you have a very big catalog of, of characters that you have made already, right? In 10 years, actually. I do. I have to think of the most popular. Like, it takes me a second because I'm like, well, what about this one or this one? Well, you know. How, how much do you think there are more than 50, more than 100? How much do you think? Yeah, I think I've played hundreds of characters at this point, especially because a lot of video games were playing more than one character. Yeah, that's amazing. That's a lot. Actually, a, a funny fact. I know you are Honoka in Dead or Alive series. Actually, yes. uh, Honoka is my main, and I didn't know that you were her voice. It's so different from what I hear from 2B, for example. It's amazing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm really glad that you main Honoka. I love her. Yeah, I love her too. <laughs> and She was my first playable character in a fighting game, actually, that I voiced. Oh, well, that's great. And what's your secret? How is it possible that you could make so different voices from characters? Because I'll never guess that you were that Honoka and Tubi share the same voice actress. Well, a lot of, lot of, lot of practice. Um, I have been doing this since I was 16, and... I'm 32 now, so wow. <laughs> I've been voice acting for a really long time and doing different voices for a long time. Um, I think also my normal voice is very mid-range, so it's easier for me to go higher or lower. If somebody has a very high voice naturally or a very low voice naturally, they're going to be more stuck in a certain voice type, but mm. I'm just kind of somewhere in the middle, so it's easy to go all over the place. Well, yeah, yes, your talent is amazing. And how's the quarantine treating you right now? Are you working? Well, it was pretty hard at first because we didn't know how it was going to affect our industry. But yes. the good news is a couple weeks in, we were able to start recording from home. I've been doing a lot of home recording for years already on things like indie games and, you know, just... um small narration things from home stuff like that mm -hmm. but for doing big games and especially for anime it was kind of tricky because they need everyone to have a certain level of quality they need everyone to sound pretty much the same when it goes into the mix mm -hmm. so it took a little while to kind of figure out a way for everyone to do that but we're using programs like source connect and That helps a lot with everyone being able to record. And I had to spend a lot of money to upgrade my home setup just so that I could continue my work properly. Yes, I imagine. And how is naturally the process? Because it's like Japan that all these ages are in the same room recording their lines or one after another. Or is different when you are in a studio? No, it's very different here because the actors go in one at a time for most projects. So... You know, I always use the example for Nier when Kyle and I were recording our lines because we all recorded separately. We didn't know what each other was doing or sounding like. So then it all gets put together and it sounds oh. like 2B and 9S are having a conversation, but we don't actually record video games that way. Oh, you, you record a uh, part, then it's not difficult when you have, like you say, a conversation to get lost or get a different tone or sentiment. When that happens it can be difficult but i like to look at the context of lines so if i'm looking at the script i like to see what i'm responding to so mm. even if i'm not hearing the other character's voice i looking at the script to see okay i'm responding to them saying this and we also don't get scripts ahead of time for most projects so it's very much like 
you have to just be able to go in and adapt to things really quickly. But in terms of making everything sound in place in a conversation, that's partly where the voice director's job comes in because the voice director knows kind of what the scene is supposed to sound like and what the story is so they can guide us to make sure that everything sounds good when it's in together. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I forgot to ask, uh, is this the first time that you make an interview for an Spanish-speaking audience? I think I did one once before, but it was for a written interview for a gaming site. Oh, for a reading interview? Do you know yes, I where? Wrote... No? Um, I think it was Todos Gamers or something like that, but I, I wrote out my responses and they translated them into Spanish and posted on the website. Okay, well, to it's great because this is the first time then in that YouTube channel that is speaking uh, from a Spanish-speaking audience. So it's like an exclusive then, only in Fricus channel, okay? <laughs> Yay, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm too. Um, do you have ever traveled to any Latin American country before? I have not. I would like to once the quarantine no? is lifted. Yeah, that would be great. Which country would you like to visit? Um, I would like to visit Costa Rica because I have family there. Costa Rica, well, we are very near there because um, I'm from Nicaragua. We, I'm on the other side of Costa Rica. And I travel there a lot because the conventions are pretty big and pretty amazing for uh, Central America, I have to say. So if well, you... I want to go to a convention there someday. <laughs> yeah, if you happen to go there, I expect to meet you there in Costa Rica. Also, um, you have a lot of Mexicans uh, fans, I want to tell you, because um, I made a, a small uh, poll in my social networks, and many of them are Mexican, and they love your work, they love your voice in 2B, and many other characters, so I want you to know that you have a lot of fans here in Latin America, not only in the US, but here too, oh, on awesome. also, also in Spain, yeah. And also, it's okay if people want to tweet to me in Spanish because I took six years of it in school, so I'm really bad at speaking it, but I can understand it fairly well. Like, I understood most of what you were saying in your intro, so if oh. somebody wants to leave a comment or a message, but they don't speak a lot of English, that's okay. If you tweet me in Spanish, I'll probably be able to get most of what you're saying. Oh, that's great then. I didn't know that, so for all the people hearing this, well, you know that all right. Well, um, maybe this is a, bored, a, a question that you heard a lot, but we all want to know, how did you start it in your voice acting career? Well, everyone has a different path for how they get started. I did a lot of online work, so I did flash animations on a site called Newgrounds, mm -hmm. and a lot of it was just kind of trial and error, just like practicing on the internet, doing hobby work, that sort of thing. Um, I took some acting classes and that was really helpful because I think a lot of people, myself included when I first started, think that if you do a lot of voices, that's kind of what you need to be successful. But it's more about the acting. It's more about being able to portray the character the way that the creators of the project intended. Oh. So acting classes were very helpful for me. I highly recommend that everyone takes them if they are interested in being a voice actor. Oh, and yeah. in order to do work on things like games and anime, I had to move to California because that's where most of the work is. You are living right now in California? Yes. And uh, where were you born? I'm from Anchorage, Alaska. Alaska. Whoa. Yeah, but now I live in the LA area. But Alaska, it's, it's ha the temperature is so low. And then in California, how did you adapt to that environment? It was difficult to you when you moved? Yeah, it was hard. It's still hard. <laughs> I understand that. Um, you never wanted to do something different, a part of voice acting as a career, no? Yes, I used to want to be a rock singer when I was a teenager, which I know isn't a very realistic goal, but... I've always been really into rock music. I still am. So I thought it would be cool to be in a band. Yeah. Uh, what? Which are your the most popular songs that you listen, the most popular artists you follow? Well, my favorite artist right now is David Bowie. He David so Bowie. Many. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's my biggest creative inspiration. He's great. I can agree with that. 
Um, when uh, when you started, did you have an anime or a video game or a cartoon that inspires you, or better say, that motivated you to stay strong and follow your career as a voice actress? Well, one game that inspired me early on was Soul Calibur 2. So if you had told me that way later in life, I would play two characters in Soul Calibur 6, yeah. <laughs> I would not have even believed that. It's a dream come true then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it's very difficult to be a voice actor in the US. I think so because it's very competitive. So it can be really hard to find opportunities and to kind of get started because even if you're a really good actor and mm. you have, you know, really good promotional materials like demo reels and things like that, there's thousands of other people trying to do the same thing and there's a lot of other people who will sound like you and have your voice type so yeah. it's very hard to kind of get um considered for parts unless you're a really well-known person or something like that where people think of you in casting so um i wasn't able to do voice acting as my full-time job until like seven years into living in la mm -hmm. and i had to have other side jobs because I was working, but it was just like, it's all about how often you're working. So you can play a lead in a show or a game, but once that project ends, like, what are you going to do? You have to then find another project and you don't work yes. for one specific company. It's all over the place. Oh, I see. So you have to send a lot of demo demos, I think, to get accepted. Yeah, and a lot of auditions, but it can be hard to get the auditions in the first place because sometimes a casting director will just send out, you know, maybe to like 20 people they know or something. And it's like, how oh. do you get thought of for that? So it's a lot of yeah. like really you, you hard have to work. get some contacts also inside the industry to help you push you a little sometimes. Yeah. And that can be really hard because a lot of people don't want to do that. Yeah, I understand. Um, talking about that, how do you, did you get your role as to be in Automata? So I had worked with the recording studio that recorded Nier. I'd worked with them on a lot of other projects, including Dead or Alive and some things like that in the mm. past. And so I was kind of on their audition roster of actors that they would bring in for things. So oh. when they were auditioning for Nier Automata, they had actors come in and just record audition lines. And... So when they had me audition for 2B, like none of us knew what the game was at that time because they hadn't publicized any information about it yet. So it was kind of very secretive and, you know, oh. we don't know what's going on, but it's like, okay, so this is like this cool kind of Android character. Um, I guess she's kind of strong and, you know, but doesn't show too much emotion, like that sort of thing. So, you know, I'm just reading the information that I'm given and yes. just making my best choice with what I think this character would sound and act like. And then when I found out I got the part and that it was the lead character, I was very excited because I hadn't played a lot of characters like that before. I normally play like younger, cute, cute characters. Yeah. So it was very surprised that I was chosen for that. So it was very difficult to adapt uh, to be the voice of 2B. I think so, just because it was so far off from what I normally play. And yeah. now I've played more characters like that, so it comes a lot easier to me. But at the time, you know, a few years ago, I hadn't done that as much. All right. And did you have any guidelines or tips made by Joko Taro or the staff of Square Enix to better fulfill the vision they have of the character? Well, we didn't work directly with Yoko Taro. I did meet him later at a concert, the oh. orchestra concert, which was really cool. Um, but that was, yeah. you know, years after we recorded. That was the last I year, worked... right? Yeah. I think was uh, it last year or earlier this year? Earlier I can't this remember. Year. Uh, yeah. yeah, earlier this year. Um, so that was a dream come true, meeting him and the composer and the producer for the series. But at the time, um, we worked with a couple of members from the localization team and with our voice director, Wendy Lee. Also, the Japanese voice actor, do you get uh, to see them recording or, or hear their voices before you make your own interpretations of the characters? 
Yes, actually, for every line, I got to hear Yui Ishikawa's performance for that line. So, you know, there were a couple of localization choices with just like, we don't want the character to be like too much like this or too much like this. Yes. So sometimes it's not always going to sound like an exact match to the Japanese, but we definitely listened to it and had it inform what we were doing. All right. Uh, so you had the entire script uh, of all the history once you were selected, or it, there was just parts of them that gives to you to interpret? Oh, we're just kind of going scene by scene. Pretty much every video game, every anime or things like that that I've worked on, it's cold reading. So we just, we go in and the director tells us a little about what we're doing, what the project is, what our character is like. And then we're given the script and it's kind of like, okay, go. So you have to really think fast and think on your feet because that's kind of the norm in the industry here. Uh, so you spoiled a little the history for yourself because you know you knew all the details of the story, the ending included. No. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really know too much about the parts that Tubi wasn't involved in, like some of the late, late game stuff. But obviously I had to know some spoilers because... Yeah. You know, I'm voicing like certain scenes in Route C, for example, but, yeah. um, you know, I think it's still very different. So even if you're kind of spoiled when recording it, when you're seeing it come together with the visuals and everything in place and not just your lines that you're recording, it's still a completely different experience. Yes. So um, all this stuff happening in ending E also caught you by surprise, I think, or did you already knew of the plot twist of the final ending of the game? I knew some of it, but other parts were a surprise. How do you feel about that ending, first time you get it? Well, I think that a, like the game is very sad and made me cry a lot, but at the same time, it's beautiful storytelling. Mm. And I, from what I understand about Yoko Taro's games, they are just brilliantly written, and he has such a great, such great ideas for creating characters and bringing stories to life, even if they're very sad. Yeah, that's right. And about the history of the game, what was your first reaction about it? Do you think it was going to be this deep and complex and in the beginning? Well, I'm kind of up for anything. Like, not a lot surprises me anymore because I've worked on so many different projects <laughs> where all yeah. sorts of things happen. So that's actually not the craziest thing I've done. <laughs> oh, what, which one is the craziest you remember? Oh, it's hard to even choose one, but I worked on a game, for example, called Mary Skelter that was really out oh, there. Oh, yeah, I, <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's very weird, bizarre, actually. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Um, if you select one, which was the most difficult scene you had while recording as to be? Oh, I think probably... Well, I almost want to say the really emotional scenes, but at the same time, I was so into character by then that it was easier for me to do that, you know, to just kind of get right into that. Um, you know, of course, it was it was sad, so I guess that part of it was hard. But in terms of just, um like, acting technique, I think it was actually harder to do the parts where she's being kind of cold and standoffish just because... You know, I'm used to playing characters who show all their emotions and who are really big and loud yeah. and stuff like that. But Tubi is so much more reserved, especially when you first meet her in the game. Yes. And then it's, of course, heartbreaking when you find out why she's like that. But, um, you know, I think at first just kind of finding where the character sits can be a challenge. Could you give us a favor? Because I was asked a lot about that. If you could say all nines like the time when Tubi was stabbed with uh, by A2 if you could repeat that scene I was asked a lot if you could say that in this interview uh, all right sure <laughs> oh nines you know you will break a lot of hearts right now oh no That's, this is pretty sad yeah it's a, it's like a memento it's a memory that will never disappear every time we remember Automata. So I think that's why it's so popular and so demanded that you will uh, rec uh, say that again. So thank you Aww. a lot. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, your favorite scene in the game and why? Oh, 
Ooh, that's hard. Um, I mean, I, I like a lot of the really intense battle stuff. And of course, I like the, this cannot continue, this cannot continue. Yeah, the that's song. Really, that's like kind of funny, you know? <laughs> you need to make a song uh, with the voice of 2V of this cannot continue or become as gods, become as gods. Yeah. But with I the think voice... people have made remixes of that. But with the voice of 2V, it will be a big success. I could assure you that. <laughs> um, I don't know, you... I might get in trouble for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, copywriting, I know. Well, um, your opinions about the relationship of 2B and 9S. Are they lovers, friends, something else? I I feel like they're... I want to say, like, they should be soulmates, even though they're androids, so they don't exactly have souls. It's more of, like, a consciousness. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I just love, like, the idea of 2B and 9S being together, and it, like, breaks my heart when they can't be, if that makes sense. <laughs> There's still possibility, you know, in the in the drama concerts, they say that, well, to be and Nines get together at the end, but we don't know the future or how it will develop, but at least they say that they are together, so... But what do you think? They are like um, a possibility that they can have feelings of love or just feelings of friendship? I think a lot of that is left up to interpretation to the player. You are like Joko Taro, you always say, no, you can interpret whatever you like, and that is, and that hurts my mind, actually, because <laughs> I want answers, <laughs> you know? I know, <laughs> I mean, I like, like, I'll have my opinions, but, <laughs> you know, obviously, whatever, whatever Yoko Taro intends the characters to be is what's, um, what the final <laughs> answer is, right? <laughs> yeah, well, no problem. Um, do you still have contact with other voice actors from Automata? Yes, we all went to the concert together, actually, and Kyle and I are still pretty close friends. Oh, yeah, I watched the stream of Kyle and you while, while you were performing the dialogues of the concerts. How did all oh, that yeah. happen? And had you planned already that you were going to do that or it just happens? Um, I think some fans on Twitter requested that we do the recording of it, but the um the dialogue was only available in Japanese and so we were like, well, there's not like an English translation, but then somebody translated it, so then we were able to record it. Yeah, that was fantastic also. And I really thank you for that because I love the Japanese voices, but I also love your work and I was feeling empty without your versions of this drama concert. So thanks again for make it possible, you know? Well, yeah, I think both um, the Japanese and English versions are great in their own way. Yeah. Um, do you think that Automata marks a before and after in your career as voice actress? Yes, I think it changed my career more than any other project that I worked on. I had worked on a lot of projects before it happened, but people didn't really know anything that I've done. Like maybe they watched or played games that I worked on, but no one knew who I was as an actress. But then after 2B, it was like a lot more people started knowing, which was kind of weird at first. <laughs> <laughs> and all that fame that uh, come from 2B um, has affected in your personal life in some way? Well, in some ways, just because some people are very mean and nasty about things. And, you know, that's just how things are on the Internet. But it's hard. Like I've had men online tell me that I'm ugly because I don't look like TV. No, that's and not true. They say that they were disappointed when seeing me and stuff like that. And, you know, that kind of stuff still hurts. Like, you can say, oh, it doesn't matter. Like, what they say doesn't matter. But it's still, I think anyone would be affected by reading something like that. Yeah. But don't don't uh, listen to them. They are wrong. Of course, the talent is also not of beauty. You have, of course, a lot of talent. So... And also, I, I watched a lot of your cosplays, and they're beautiful, too. Congratulations about the Jolene cosplay. I, I, I really like it, and also the 2B cosplay. Um, how is it to be in, a, in the dress of 2B? I think it's pretty uncomfortable, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I kind of stopped doing it because it was too uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> well, actually, I should um 
send you a picture so you can use it for the interview. <laughs> oh, that will be great. Thank you. Okay, I have it now. Thank you. I will use it, of course. Yes. Great. Okay, and did you knew about other Jokotaro's games before you were selected as to be? I had heard of them, but I didn't know too much about them. Um, now, have you played any of them? The Drakengar series or the Fierce Near? I have not, unfortunately, but I am familiar with the stories and characters to an extent. Okay, and do you know um, the news of the new Nier Replicant, the remastered version 1.2, I don't know what number else? The... Yeah, I heard about that on Twitter. Also, I heard news that Yu Ishikawa was going to have like a cameo appearance, just voice. So, do you know something that we don't about the English localization about that? Nope, and even if I did, I couldn't say either way, but I hope that would be really cool. Yeah, I hope too. I hope it could happen. Um, you said that you met already Joko Taro in the concert, right? Yes. How is he in person? Is he always that eccentric all the time when he's not in public? He seemed like a normal guy when I met him. And you see her face? Is it his face? Sorry? Yes, a, a little. <laughs> oh, okay. Disappointed or not? <laughs> no, <laughs> not disappointed. Okay. But I'm like, but the secret must stay safe with me. <laughs> yeah, you should never see the face of a great master like him, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Just the Emil head. Yeah, okay. Um. Now, talking in general, not only Automata, which are your favorite characters? The characters that you have interpreted and why? Very special to me because she's so, um, she was just like a defining character for me and the game and the story are so beautiful. Um, I've also had a lot of fun with characters like Reimi Sugimoto from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure because that's my favorite show of all time. Mm -hmm. And of course, I love working on fighting games because I like to play fighting games. Oh, I, I think I know the answer already for this question. But do you have like a dream character that you always wanted to have the chance to get the role? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jolene Cujo from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 6. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you are a JoJo fan. Also, here in this channel, we also are JoJo fans. So, tell oh, me. that's great. Tell me, which is your favorite story arc? Oh, that's really hard. I like all of them. Um, maybe parts five or six. Yeah, you're up to date with the manga, right? Yes, I caught up on part eight, the most recent chapters, um, not too long ago. Okay, and if you have to pick one, who is your husband in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? Oh, Diego Brando, easily. <laughs> it's the favorite of all of them. I think it's also my husband, even if I'm not in that territory, but I have to respect <laughs> Dio, of course, yes. He has, um, he loves coffee, and his stand is named after a David Bowie album. I have to like him. Okay. Also, I, I was thinking maybe you like um, Kira, because he's also portrayed like uh, David Bowie in the... The part. Yeah, and I think it's really cool because he has the same name as me and he looks like David Bowie, so... Yeah, so many coincidences, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what do you like this series? Like, what aspects do you think it make it stand out from other animes? Um, I think it's just so unique and so bizarre, if you will. <laughs> um, I also love all the music references. I love how weird and over the top all of the villains are and the characters in general i love the designs um araki was very influenced by fashion as well and yeah. so you can just see how unique everything looks and just how strange everything is in that universe yet it makes sense yeah it's very unique uh series in all the anime industry i think well apart of the memes because it's very known by the memes I think mm -hmm. JoJo's is a very, like, the, the, the emblem of some of the mangas in, in the classic manga for me. Because I consume a lot of recent animes and I don't feel so identified by them. But with JoJo's, with Hunter x Hunter and so many other animes, but from the 90s, from the 80s, I feel like I can be identified by the stories and by the characters because they are so unique. 
Yes, I feel the same way. I also, I was in Hunter x Hunter. I played Zushi. Oh, yeah. Well, Hunter x Hunter is my anime from all the time. I think it's my favorite anime of all time. So, oh, nice. Yeah. So, um, waifus. Do you have any waifus? Ooh. Yes, I like Mika Jogasaki from Idol Master. Oh, Idol Master. Uh, well, I have something with the Idol animes. I'm not sure why I can't like them so much. But of course, I guess. Well, that one's more the game that she's in. Oh, and the games. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, and you play any games from the Idol Master series or the Love Life? I used to play Idol Master, but I ran out of space on my tablet, so I had to delete it. I still play Love Live, um, and then I play a mobile game called Love Nikki, and I've spent so much money on that. Ooh, you spend money. It's a gacha game, I think. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, what do you do in your spare time? Um, most of the time I just hang out and play Animal Crossing. Lately, I also go on Pokemon Go walks. Um, I used to do a lot of raiding before the coronavirus happened in Pokemon Go. Yeah. Um, that was and then difficult. I help. Yeah. I also help moderate a Discord server for voice actors. Oh, and so um, I have um, asked uh, subs from my channel to make questions for you, and I have received a lot. I have more than 200 questions. Oh, well. <laughs> Yeah, I spent like. I guess we'll uh, have to narrow it down to what we have time for. Yeah, I spent like two nights reading a lot of questions, so I selected a few ones. So if you can answer them, I will really appreciate it. Sure. So, yeah. So, uh, the first one is from Mr. Chepe. It's he says, which ending from Automata is your favorite and why? Um, I would say C because it's like kind of like the true ending. Yeah, and um, from the funny endings, do you have any of them in the game? The mackerel. <laughs> yeah, the fishing one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now from Gonzalo Hidalgo, the, uh, he says, are there dialogues that were omitted from the final product? Could you give us an example and why do you think they were omitted? can't remember anything like that but also we recorded so much dialogue that i don't know if there was anything that was cut i don't think there was but who knows <laughs> yeah okay mini droid ask if you could change something about 2b what could you change and why i feel like if i changed anything about her she wouldn't be the same character yeah i think so too well Asael 1332XRD. To be in a Smash, yes or no? I wish. That would be amazing. Yeah, I think it would be amazing too. Do you think it could happen? I don't think it's likely just because none of the Nier games were on a Nintendo console. But, uh, but also uh, Cloud is there. And, you know, Final... Yeah, but they had some Final Fantasy game on GameCube in the past. And, uh, also, I don't know, I... also Joker from Persona. He's not in the But they had a thing. Persona game on the DS. So, like, there's always, like, some, you know, some kind <laughs> of excuse for, well, this character was technically on a Nintendo system. And I'm just like, ah, port near to Switch so that maybe. <laughs> yeah, that would be the dream come true. They announced to be from Smash, for Smash, and also near Automata for Switch. And that would be great, isn't it? That would be amazing. But I also think because she was a guest character in Soul Calibur, I don't know if she would be in two games. Oh, yeah, that would be maybe. Well, Lumina says, um, could you say something in Spanish, but with the voice of 2B? <laughs> um, I can't really think of anything. <laughs> I, I would probably sound bad because of my accent. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, and this question was made by a lot of people. They want to know if you ever met the voice actress of the commander, or if you know who she is. I don't. She was uncredited, so... You don't know why, why that happens? Um, sometimes actors just can't go credited for whatever reason, for like legal mm. things or this or that. Oh, I see. 
Then now Sofia Santiago asks about what stand would you have if you were a JoJo character? My stand is called Insomniac, and it has the power to turn any liquid substance into coffee. Wow. <laughs> you like a lot the coffee, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> All right. Bejirkins want to know if you have any funny anecdotes from your work as a voice actress that you could share with us. Um, my cats interrupt my recording when I record at home. <laughs> you have a lot of cats? I have four. Oh, you are a cat lady then. Four mm -hmm. cats. Where well, I'm a cat man because I have two in my work. They are very cute. <laughs> then Alan Cruz asks if you want to be a director of voice actors in future projects. Yes, I do. I'm just not sure how to get into that type of work. It is difficult to, well, it's difficult to be a voice actress and to be a director is even difficult to be. To become. I think so because there's less um, director positions than there are for voice actors because on any given project you might have like 20 actors but only one director. Oh, so you have to be in charge of a lot of people actually. Yeah, I think it would be fun, but it's a lot of like you have to have seniority in the industry. All right. Um, then uh, Moon says, um, which other characters would you like to interpret in the future? A part of Jolene, of course. Yeah, Jolene, um, Dizzy from Guilty Gear would be a lot of fun. You like Guilty Gear? Yes. Uh, you are, you are a gamer, right? How many games yeah. do you think? Uh, uh, which are your favorite games? Um, Guilty Gear for sure. I like all the Pokemon games, the Zelda games, um, Ace Attorney series, um, Soul Calibur, uh, Street Fighter, um, Smash. And I heard that you play competitive sometimes? I used to. I haven't in many years. <laughs> oh, right now you don't have the time, I think. Yeah. I mean, I guess I could learn more stuff now because I have more free time. Well, Kira, um, do you have any final words for the audience that you, could, that you want to share with us? Yeah, I guess I just want everyone to remember to be supportive and kind to each other right now because there is a lot of uncertainty in the world and a lot of people are dealing with really difficult things in their lives. Um, whether because of the virus or not directly because of the virus, but I think it's just a hard time emotionally for a lot of people. So of course, to be says emotions are prohibited, but <laughs> as humans and not androids, we all are dealing with a lot of emotions right now. So I guess I just want people to stop and think about what you're saying to people, even if it's just online and to be kind and understanding when you can. Yes, thank you for your kind words. Also, I I get asked a lot if you could uh, say the glory to mankind so we can finish in a great manner in this interview. Glory to mankind. <laughs> claps, claps. Thank you, Kira, for all your time, for joining us today. And I really appreciate you could spare this time with us. You, I know you are a very busy person. But you don't know how many people are very anxious to hear about you in the Spanish community. So if you have the opportunity to visit us or to be in a convention, please say to us because we would love to go and see your own life. Okay. Oh, the best way to get that to happen is to tell the conventions in your area, you know, next year when all this is hopefully over, tell them that you'd like to see me as a guest because if I email them, they're just going to probably not say anything. But if people say we want to see this person, then they'll be more willing to listen, I think. Well, you know, the community is getting bigger. Uh, in Mexico, I said there is a lot of person and Mexico has the biggest convention in Latin America. So I will try to contact them and try because I know there is a fan of Automata and from Joko Taro's games that would love to have you as a guest uh, person in their conventions. So of yeah, course I will support that. Yeah, bring me It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, thank you, Kira, for your time. And yes. And well, thank that... you so much for having me and to everyone listening. Thanks. Uh, well, guys, 
Bueno, chicos, eso ha sido todo. Por favor, uh, Kira, um, I will put a link of your social networks if you can provide sure. me so I could tell people to follow you there so for any news and more things. I was Sounds this. great. I'm almost at 50,000 followers on Twitter at the time of this, but not quite yet. <laughs> okay, well, let's get a thousand more from the Latin America community then. Okay. So, awesome. Yes, there's my links below. <laughs> okay, I have now. Entonces, chicos, este, voy a dejar los links a las redes sociales de Kira abajo en la descripción. También los van a poder ver en la pantalla. Así que vayan, denle amor a su contenido y estén al pendiente de todas las noticias y nuevos proyectos que eh, Kira está trabajando. Y por supuesto que si quieren más contenido de Nier, Drakengar, Yokotaro y también de actores de voz de estos juegos, por favor suscríbanse y también vayan a las redes sociales. Well, thanks Kira, have a good night and thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much, you too. Thanks, bye. Bye. Y bien, ¿qué les ha parecido la entrevista? ¿Les ha gustado toda la información que nos ha dado Kira? ¿Su punto de vista acerca de cómo fue interpretar a Tsubi? Déjenme un comentario con sus opiniones acá abajo y les gustaría ver en el canal algún otro actor de doblaje de videojuegos o de pronto hasta llegamos hasta Yoko Taro en una de esas. Bueno, se vale soñar. Por ahora eso es todo de mi parte y nos vemos en otra.